All right, well, because we have the Boneyard Beach here, they've created these nice tide pools, which attract all kinds of organisms that uh, a lot of times you wouldn't normally see living on the front beach. Normally you just like, see shells, uh, which are actually exoskeletons of once living animals. Um, on this tree right here, this old trunk right here, we actually have a whole bunch of animals living together. We have some little, uh, a bunch of barnacles, which are actually crustaceans like crabs and shrimp. Barnacles, the ones that don't have a door closed right there, those are not alive anymore. The ones that have a little door still closed, those are the ones that are alive. And you can think of a barnacle as like, oh, look at that blue crab right there. Big female blue crab. Oh, cool. I could tell right away that was a girl because she had her fingernails painted. Her red, she's got red claw tips. Check her out if she comes out again. Check out the claws. You see those red claw tips right there? Yeah, so she's hiding under here, looking for a little quick meal. And uh, so anyway, these barnacles, uh, they're, it's like a curled up crab or shrimp inside of there. And when they're covered by, right now, they're just holding their breath. But when the tide comes in and covers them up, so when the tide, it's low tide right now. At high tide, this tree's trunk is completely underwater and the little door opens up and it looks like these little hairs are coming out. Those are like its legs and claws catching little bits of food, mostly plankton is what barnacles eat. But yeah, they're crustaceans like crabs and shrimp. And if we look around in the tide pole, we saw that blue crab and there's almost always hermit crabs that have taken up old shells. So here's a flat clawed hermit crab living in this old moon snail shell. And the thing about shells is once the original animal dies that made the shell, they become homes for lots of other animals. A lot of people get confused when they find a shell washed up on the beach. They think the animal left the shell and went and found a new shell. But just like you can't live without your skeleton, they can't live without their exoskeleton. Um, so when you find a shell washed up on the beach, that's, you can kind of think of it as the bones of a once living animal. And so all the ones that have one opening, like the moon snail, here's another flat clawed hermit crab in this old whelk snail shell. These are all univalves. So just like a bicycle has two wheels, you can think of bivalves, like this pin shell right here has two halves. A valve is a shell. So when you pick up a shell on the beach, that's a valve. So bivalve, two shells, univalve one shell all this all this um, univalves are actually snails that made this shell the oldest part of the snail is that tip top part right there that's how big it was when it hatched out of its egg and then the snail actually adds shell just like you add bone to your skeleton as you grow and so they actually part of their body is called their mantle that secretes the shell and it keeps adding shell wrapping around bigger and bigger and then something might happen to that snail could have gotten eaten it could have gotten washed up on the beach didn't have enough dried out and then another animal like a hermit crab will make it its home so old shells they become very important for other animals look that auger snail has a hermit crab in it right there that's got a long clawed hermit crab in it. That's the flat clawed hermit crab. And uh, these guys, both of these snails um, are predators. You don't really think about these snails as being predators, um, but most of the snails in, in our South Carolina's coast here are actually predators. That means they catch and kill another animal. Um, and so these guys, the whelks here, I grew up calling these conks, but I've learned in South Carolina, we don't have conks. You can think of conch, clear water, Caribbean. Conks live in places where the water tends to be more clear and more sunlight penetrates to the bottom so you get more plants growing because conks are herbivores. That means they eat plants. Whelks, what we have here, have this nice sharp edge right here and they are carnivores, so they eat meat. They're predators and guess what their prey is? You would never think it, but these guys eat bivalves. So they would go up to a, a clam or a pin shell like this, a bivalve or an oyster, and they have their built-in oyster knife right here. They'd go up to it, they'd wedge that, they'd actually put a little pressure, try to chip away a couple little pieces, wedge that nice built-in clam knife they have, pry it open just enough to stick their long radula tongue in there and scrape out all the juicy meat. And uh, 
We've got another predator here. Both of these guys are actually predators, but the moon snail, I call him or her the bully of the beach, or Mr. Lick and Spit. And almost all of you have seen this. If you have you ever found a clam on the beach with a perfect hole in it like that? Wonder how that got there. It's perfect to make a necklace or earrings. Those are great ones to keep to make a little uh, necklace with, but the moon snail is the one who made it. So the moon snails, they live underneath the sand and they move along underneath the sand. When they find a live clam that's got its other half attached to it, the clam is shut with about 10 pounds of pressure, impossible to open up with your bare hands, but the moon snail has a tongue like a drill bit and a spit that's real acidy. And it actually licks and spits its way through the clam. When it finds the clam, it spits a little bit on there. Licks, spits, licks, spits, licks, till it drills that perfect little hole. Spits in there, makes it like a clam milkshake, and then <laughs> slurps it out. And look, that moon snail was eaten by another moon snail. That's why I call them bully of the beach. They're cannibals. They eat their own aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters about anything they can get their tongue through. The auger snail also sits out this hole, side the hole of a golden acorn worm. It's actually got disposable harpoon tongues. When that little worm pops its head out, the, the snail spits its tongue at it, spears the worm, reels it into its mouth, and eats the worm and its own tongue. But that's okay because it has new tongues in reserve that it puts back out there. So, kind of crazy. Look, here's a purple sea urchin, which is kind of unusual in South Carolina on our sandy beaches, but when you have places like the Boneyard Beach where they have something they can uh, attach to that has algae growing on it, they can cruise along with their little spiny points here. It's called the purple sea urchin, and this is their mouth right underneath, and they'll graze and lick up that algae. Um, these guys are you know, pretty much harmless. I mean, if you stepped on one barefoot, it might hurt you, but there's no venom or poison or anything in them. And these are different than the mollusk, the shells that I just talked about, the um, bivalves and univalves. These guys are called echinoderms. Look at its little spines moving there. Um, echinoderms are sand dollars, sea cucumbers, sea urchins, and sea stars. They all have five equal parts, echinoderm, means spiny skinned animal. And they all have some sort of spines that they used to uh, move around with. And they all have a, a mouth on the underneath. They all have five equal parts. And they are uh, super cool animals. We'll put this guy back.